at SAFM with Ashraf Gardner. Okay, anybody, just about anybody in advertising will know the name Andrew Yuman. Goodness, if they don't know, you'd have a problem. He's the CEO of the Lurie, so you hope if you receive a Lurie one day uh, that, that he'd be handing it out. Unless he's retired, then that may be too long. Andrew is the CEO, so we're going to chat to him. 50 minutes spending time with him, getting to know him a little bit better. Andrew, good chatting to you. Hi. Hi, Asha. Yeah, good, and, good. And before I get into who you are, let's just talk about Lurie's 2015. I think it's opportunity to talk now because that's just been launched, right? Yes, a uh, new campaign uh, launched uh, just this week. Yeah, and and expectations for this year? Well, I think it's a, a very exciting year. You know, the most obvious thing is the big change after six years in Cape Town. Louis is moving to Durban this year, and I think that's uh, going to be very exciting, offering us uh, a lot of opportunity to do some new things. Mm. How, w- w- would that mean the personality of the event will also change? Meaning, away from the beach and one of you, will the actual show change dramatically? So let me ask you, Ashraf, how does Durban equate with away from the beach? <laughs> I don't know. We'll find out when I hopefully get there, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I think we're getting closer to the beach than we've ever been before, actually. Yeah. It's one of the, one of the um, amazing things about Durban. Mm-hmm. It's actually a truly great beachfront. It's a real beach city. Mm-hmm. And we're going to Durban proper itself. And I think a lot of people, I imagine the majority of your listeners, probably go, Durban, I haven't been there for years. That's the phrase that I hear the most often. And actually, Durban have had an amazing turnaround and transformation, I would say, in the last few years. And Durban today, uh, the entire waterfront is a, a boardwalk uh, promenade all the way from the, hard way, uh, from the harbor right up to Sun Coast Casino, and everything in between is renovated. It's beautiful gardens, mm-hmm. it's clean, it's policed, it's safe. And these are words that, honestly, I can say you couldn't have said 10 years ago. Uh, uh, so there is uh, Durban today is a, is a wonderful city, and it's going to give us the opportunity to really have everyone in one space all within one walking okay. distance and from another uh, on the beach great and I say from an agency point I mean it's quite simple just go to luris.coza to, to enter right and all the details will be there right it's luris.com dot com ok got that right yep. but let's talk about you so you've been the CEO of the Luris for how many years sure this is actually uh, I think this is 11 years this year wow in a, in, a, yeah. in an agency or rather in a field where an advert, you know, a month old advert is too old, uh, you've got this amazing sense of longevity, right? Why so? Uh, you know, that's a good question. <laughs> one of the <laughs> one of those things I'd say uh, it's uh, more fate than planning. Uh, I think I, I almost stumbled into the Lurries by chance eleven years ago. T- tell us and, what tell uh, us what happened, yeah. Well, I, I actually, to start as, for start as I'm an engineer, I'm a scientist, I studied material science, mm-hmm. and I did my doctorate uh, in science, and uh, then uh, the in the 90s really was the period of the digital boom, the dot-com boom, and through that I got involved in digital technology, and I then, through digital uh, media, I got involved in the industry, in, uh, in advertising, marketing. And I worked in New York for five years, and there I began working with award shows in New York. And in 2005, the Lurie's uh, went through a bit of a hiccup in a difficult period, 2004, Mm -hmm. and I was invited in 2005 to come and head up the Lurie's. And that was that, and I've been there ever since. And, and, And many, so first of all, what's happened to your scientist job then? What's happened to it? Yeah. Well, again, that's a good question because a lot of people say, well, isn't that like completely uh, onto too very far removed? And I actually never think of it as very far removed at all because, and it's one of the challenges in our society. We kind of, we think the word, if we say, oh, he's creative. And we think creativity must be boxed. And, it's, and, and generally, if somebody can draw pretty pictures, that's a consideration of creative. But one of the biggest creative minds the world has seen in the last century was who, Ashraf? 
One and of everyone the biggest... uses him as a who, who's the I, I would, say, I would say the Apple guy, days. obviously. I would, I would say the Apple one, isn't it? Yeah, is that but the one who example? is the Apple guy? Who is Steve Jobs' hero? Who did he? Whose picture did he have up on his wall? Who did he have? Did he have Newton or what? He had Einstein on. His Einstein, wall. of course. Okay, okay, yeah. got that right. So, so Einstein was a hero of Steve Jobs, and Einstein, everyone, you know, he's the poster boy of creativity, mm, mm. but he's a physicist. In the, so the point being is creativity isn't isn't limited to a a specific field. It's limited to a state of mind. And what we have to promote is innovation and ideas and thinking. And I so I started off working in a very creative area of science. And uh, so I basically, to me, it's still the same process, and it's the process of continually challenging continually doing new things and continually rejecting ideas that um, are the norm. And that is uh, really what one has to do if you're looking for the best ideas that are being generated in our environment. And and, and your point earlier on about, you know, getting into this field, in fact, uh, during that uh, dot, uh, dot com boom and getting into digital. So the fact that you're now with, with Luris, in fact, you know, has your creativity been enhanced by being where you are because you're not, you know, creating adverts yourself, or in fact it is, or has it been diminished? I mean, which one of the two? Because some may say from the outside, and it's a good way to correct any, you know, uh, shortcomings in terms of how we see things, right, is you, you're very much the administrator, so what is it that you do? Yeah, I agree, and absolutely again, so again, if you, I, I, my role should, the Luris is it's on the one hand it's an administrator and that's absolutely correct but it's not simply rubber stamping the Lurie's role is also to inspire so you see if you're simply saying uh, I don't care what you did just give me whatever you did and we will put a rubber stamp on it that's pure administration if you have a role also to give people a message and to inspire them and to engage with them that is really what our primary role is. Our role is to inspire people to do better work. But I agree with you. Our, when it comes to measuring, we simply take all the work and we have a very neutral position. And we say, here, yeah, we actually, even the, I don't even judge any work. So I'm, I, I, we manage a neutral process of having panels of judges, international jury chairmen, and simply ensuring mm, mm, then mm, that the process is efficiently managed. But again, getting back to your administration, I'll give you a good example. Take Eskom as an example. Mm, that mm. should purely be administration. So you get efficient administration and you get efficient innovative administration where you're looking ahead and you get administration where you're not looking beyond next week and that can cause problems as we all see when we have no power. Yeah, indeed. Okay. All right, nine one one zero four two zero seven. If you wish to, uh, as, well, if you wish to call in, quick calls always welcome. Chatting uh, to uh, Andrew Human, the CEO of the Luris. Well, fifteen minutes spending time getting to know him. You can SMS to three four seven zero one. You can tweet at Ashraf Garda. By the way, uh, Frank Frank Mark speaking slightly off the topic to a degree, saying Durban why thirty years still no high speed train. Shocking. Uh, and and another one saying the Durban beachfront is filthy. Who is this? Blathering idiot, doctor on your show. Uh, what is he smoking? I'm sure you can handle that, Andrew. Uh, MZ is saying, true, I was in Durban early December 2014. The beaches are clean and visible. Policed, uh, they're visibly policed all the time. Wish P could ask how they did it, especially on safety. So there you are, another, another story coming out of that. But I don't want to waste time responding to that. The more important one, Pritya Surat from the uh, product of the year was here a few minutes ago. And he said, I must ask you, because you made some important comments on the night uh, that the awards were given out a few days ago. What is it that you said? <laughs> I think he's putting me on the spot there. I, <laughs> I think some of those comments can't be said on radio, Ashraf. <laughs> well, well but, I don't know. I, I need key, to ask. The key point I made to people was that, again, you, it goes back to your question about what is, what is the role of the Luries and the role of an administration. And what I said at the Products of the Year Awards is my challenge I said to everyone there is Nice. Everyone thinks about nice and you say, oh, this is a nice environment. I have a nice home. When you get up in the morning, do you want to get into a nice car? And I said, no, actually, that's not good enough. 
Mm-hmm. Nice isn't enough. We, what you need to do is you need to reject nice, and you have to say, I want something incredible. I want something that's absolutely awesome. So if I look at a, at a, at a Lamborghini, a Lamborghini is never going to be described as a nice car, is it? Mm, mm, mm. You're going to say, wow, that's an awesome car. So again, if you are really, and that is the difference between true innovation and just making things happen. So if you're looking on the innovative front of things and you're saying what is new and what is truly innovative, it should never be nice. And so if you're working in our area of brand communication, so if you're a marketer and you're a brand leader and you're a thought leader, you should try and say, okay, how am I going to go have a get up today and have a day that is absolutely not nice? Mm, okay, good. So, so, so nice is not nice. I mean, that that's my big takeout from chatting to you right now. That's pretty much it. And, and nice therefore, you want to you have want to have a day that's absolutely not nice because it needs to be whatever else far more glorious than not nice. Yeah, got that. Absolutely. I, I think it works. It certainly works for me, right? What? What? How, how do you seriously the day, the night before the Luris and the day after the Luris, uh, what goes through your mind? <laughs> The, I've interviewed a few times on the day after, I think. I don't know whether you survived it. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting thing when you, when you work in that sort of time frame and, uh, when the, and you look forward to the day after. You often wonder about putting all your effort into something where you're, you're only hoping to see the day after it. So uh, the day after is always very rewarding, actually, because uh, you get to really only relax at the first time at that point so right until then you have uh, and again it's i mean we have an amazing team last year we had 500 people directly employed on the production during that week so we have a fantastic everyone from the producer down there's a team working 24 hours on every little detail and i think that's the key thing so literally at the day before i'm not even doing anything i'm simply then watching the team um, go to work and doing what they do. Mm. Ha, ha, you know, has being involved in the Luris taken the fun out of advertising for you? Actually, the, the upside is you only work on the best work, and I think that's one of the real upsides that I, if you look across advertising, the, the sad thing is you see a lot of bad work. There's an enormous amount of, if you uh, get in your car and you drive home today, Ashraf, Mm-hmm. Which billboard do you remember? Can't, Which can't one remember is memorable? Any, can't remember any of them at the moment, quite honestly. But that's your yeah. Point, that, yeah. That, that's often uh, that that is the real challenge. And uh, to say, you know, which digital media is really working? Who's communicating well? And who's communicating in a way that they're engaging with their audience and their audience are enjoying it and appreciating it? So at least the upside. So the lyrics we get about three thousand entries. And of those 3,000, less than uh, only around 1% get a gold lurry. So what you're doing is you're filtering and you're taking 3,000 of the best pieces from across the region. And then you're filtering to saying only a handful of those are actually being awarded a statue. So the upside of it is you get every year to be inspired by seeing every year who's doing the best work. Okay, so, the so you're inspired industry. and enjoy and that. You're inspired and not bored, right? What, you know, the the, the earlier point that you joined the, the, the Luris at a time when it was going through a trough, right? And interesting, I, re- I was reading some things about you the other day and, and you say that you effectively single-handedly have turned around the Luris, so, so made it certainly not nice. Luris is now not nice, for example. Uh, but on the other hand, turned it into an entire week-long event. That means it's become a great brand where therefore cities like whether it's Cape Town or, or Durban can vie to host the Luris in a way that it probably never was so before. How, how do you personally feel about it? I mean, do you take the credit for that, firstly? Well, again... Uh of course, I'm happy to take the credit. Thanks, Ashraf. <laughs> yeah, it's all my doing. It's mine. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. So, so, you know, seriously, again, always there's a lot of people involved. And one of the things is the Lurie's is a not-for-profit association. So we have a very committed and passionate board and a working committee. And it's all people from the industry. And I think what happened in 2005 
is exactly that. So a group of people between the um, ACA and the Creative Circle, that they were actually the drivers behind it, and they said, we're not going to let this fail. And it was their determination to kickstart the Lurries in the beginning of 2005, and they're the ones who brought me on board. But I've been working, you know, there's some members on our board who've been there since the onset, people like uh, Russell, uh, Mike Shalit and Russell mm. Corey have both been uh, on the board since 2005, and they've both been passionately involved in all our uh, decisions throughout. So there are a lot of people who obviously support this, which uh, is important. So, so to confirm, that the Luris now, in your opinion, is not nice, it's what? How would you describe it? I would say you exciting is where you would want to be uh, in our position. You want to, we, we have to, we want to be exciting and inspiring. What, what for you, we've got about two minutes to go, the three best adverts, not that were awarded, that you've just personally enjoyed? Um, that's always a tough question off the bat, mm. so uh, let me uh, give it some thought. Off the top of my head, I'd say we had a Grand Prix many years ago in one of the first years that was uh, Virgin Atlantic's Love Story uh, mm -hmm. television commercial. I don't know if you remember it. Just and it refresh was very, memory, yeah. So it was uh, very clever. It was two, uh, two gay guys with the Bee Gees music playing in the background and they were sort of having this very romantic encounter and right at the end they're getting married and they're about to kiss. And this guy wakes up from a bad dream and he's, and he's sitting in a squashed airplane seat and it says, if you, uh, if you wanted to, uh, sleep with him, you would have married him because you've got a guy lying all over him and it says, Virgin Atlantic <laughs> upper parts, which gives you more room. So I even see, I remember the punchline, I remember well, everything well, about well. it and that's what makes for a, a great ad. But the ad was clever because it was at a time where, um, same sex marriages were illegal in South Africa. So this is the point about the industry again. If you want to, if you, you are culturally relevant. So to be, to be communicating properly, you have to be understanding who you're communicating to. So you have to be South African, talking to South Africans about things that are relevant. So besides it being a humorous ad, it was politically re very relevant at the time. And I, I, you know, I've always thought it was an excellent uh, ad. And then certainly made a difference for you. Where do you hang out? I hang out uh, um, at home, and I and I refuse to go anywhere else. <laughs> well, well, you know, it's an interesting point you raise because you're right. Some people you see them at the function virtually three times a week. Now, outside the Luris and the fact that you were the product of the year the other day, when I think about it, you're spot on. I I hardly see you elsewhere. So so why what is it? I mean, and there's a deliberate reason why you do that, right? Tell me why. Well, actually, I live in the uh, Rosebank area, and I must say, I think it's one of the nicest urban districts in South Africa, and it's one of, and it's also an area that has been. So funny, one of your listeners was going on about the high-speed train, and the Khao train has a Rosebank station, and the Rosebank and Santon stations have transformed the areas around them, and Rosebank around that station. Is a, is a beautiful urban district. I walk everywhere from my house. I walk into Rosebank. I walk to the cinema. I walk to restaurants. Uh, there's virtually nothing that I do that I get in my car. So if I have to get in my car and drive somewhere, then I generally decline. Now, I often tell people if you need to find me, I'll either be, that's on the weekend, either at Santon City or in Rosebank. Now, why? Have I never bumped into you in Rosebank? I have no idea. I mean, I live four kilometers from there, so there you are. Well, what you must do is next time you're in the Rosebank Center, send me a message and, yeah, we'll, and we'll, probably, we'll, probably, we'll probably have to do that. Yeah. All right, a couple of more things. What, what's the one thing about you we don't know? that, that you, you feel you'd like to just make a point and tell people about you? I, I can't tell you that, uh, Shraf, because uh, I'd uh, get arrested. Is it that bad? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it must be. Yeah. All right. You'll get arrested, right? Uh, l lastly, in in terms of the, there was a period that you had resigned a couple of years ago from the Luris, and then you came back w without actually leaving. Is that correct? Yeah, I think I I, I I headed towards the front door and I didn't make it out and I was dragged back in again. So so what is the plan when you were resigning? You know, what is your plan next, and and what's your remaining career goals? 
I, th- I think it, it probably was that tipping point that you, I think I reached that point and I thought it was time to move on and do something else. And, uh, and then when I was in the process of doing it, that's when the, the very board sat with me and convinced me to stay. And actually it was, I think, just at that point where we really grew the Lurries to the next level. So you, as you were saying, the Lurries has become a whole creative week. Just a few years ago, the award we used to judge in Johannesburg and then have an award somewhere else in the country a few months later. So now we have judging and the awards and a fantastic international seminar and a lot of workshops all happening in the same week. So I think that's what gave me the challenge and the interest to stay on was really growing it from a simple um, award ceremony into a whole week of uh, inspiration and also that this goes beyond um, one area of brand communication so what's nice now is not only is in a week but we get something like 30 percent of our delegates are from the brand side you know it's not simply a lot of people think it's just about agencies and just creative departments but we have ceos and marketing directors and designers and architects so, and thought leadership is really who comes to the week now, and mm, also mm. from all across the continent. Absolutely. So that is really the exciting part. All right. Lastly, it's this time of the year, people deciding what to do with their careers in terms of where they're going to go, especially youngsters, right? Why should someone, in your opinion, I'm giving you a pitch, right? Why should someone enter the advertising industry? So that's a very good question. And, uh, and, I have, and uh, funnily enough, I was just reading an article where a lot of people again think, oh, creative, creative, you have to be passionate. There's no money in advertising. There's no money in creativity. So Martin Sorrell, and I'm not sure, I'm sure you know Sir Martin Sorrell. Mm, 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 and mm, uh, mm. he spoke at uh, Davos uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yes, that's right. And mm. and I, I think what you probably don't know about Sir Martin Sorrell, well, first of all, he's the head of WPP. Absolutely, WPP a global agency. WPP is the biggest agency in the world. He is in 111 countries, and I think employs something like 180,000 people worldwide. And he is the single highest paid executive in the United Kingdom, and his annual income uh, is 30 million pounds per annum. So there is money in advertising. I mean, is, is that your answer? So my answer is, if you think it's a career for people who, who um, if, you know, who make no money, then look at Martin Sorrell. So the, the peak of the industry, he is, he is the highest paid earner in the United Kingdom as the head of an ad agency. Well, right, so if you want to be the highest paid earner in, in South Africa, then head up a successful advertising. Okay, so short, short answer, if anybody wants to get into advertising, just Google Martin Soros with a S-O, I think, double R-O-S, and I'll know exactly... No, it's S-O-R-R-E-L. E, 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 okay, got that. Yeah, thank you so much for that, uh, for correct, correcting me. Andrew, great chatting to you. Thanks so much for your time. Appreciate it. Thanks, Ashra. Said 15 All minutes with Andrew Human. It's probably 20 minutes with Andrew Human, but I'm sure you've enjoyed that as well. Martin Cyril, by the way, is is that name, right? CEO here, Andrew Human of the Luris, and yeah, get into advertising now. We should.